G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I've had a morning, a Sunday morning, casting up some more round stock, small, small diameter stuff. Turned out really good, you know, the system works well. And uh, I've got some in here that I haven't taken out yet. I've let it cool right down, so I'll knock that out in a minute. And then uh, I picked up some junk or scrap or throw away aluminium flower pots and I'll show you those in a minute and I melted them down and I cut them up or well, cut one up partly and I melted it down to see what it's going to be like you know you sort of think oh you know what's that going to be like it's not a car wheel rim and it's it's not die cast crappy zinc lawnmower deck you know I wonder how that's going to be of course, when you do this sort of work, you always make sure that you always get the gloves that have got a hole in them, and that way you're guaranteed to burn your finger. You know, if you've got several gloves, you always pick the ones with a hole in them. And uh, of course, when a glove when a glove is actually worn out, you know, I mean, they've still got life in them, but it's just that if you handle hot stuff, no, they're not a good idea. The other pair would have been a hell of a lot better. So I burnt my finger. And not too bad, but it was bad enough that uh, I had to take a pine killer and uh, in fact it's so effective I might have to have another one just to make sure that I'm totally functional. But uh, yeah, nah, bad idea. Okay, let's have a look at these flower pots and I'll show you what I got off the side of the road. So here's one of them that I haven't cut up yet. I don't know if they're uh, something off of someone's grave or <laughs> they're supposed to be modern art. They would have been expensive in their day because they've cast this and then once you've cut it open, I'll show you inside, they've then welded in this rim section. Very corroded, you know, which isn't a wonderful sign. I don't know what it's been used for. It's... Uh, that's one of them, and I've cut one up in half. Here's the other one, and I did that with the moddy reciprocating saw once again. And there's a good, I'd say there's a good kilo of, al of aluminium in these. It's a lot of aluminium actually, and they yeah they would have been expensive. You know, you can see where they've welded it. You know, around here, so it would have been expensive. Yeah. Anyway, I cut it up. It didn't cut too bad. It was pretty tough going. And then I, I sectioned it and then I snapped them with the sledgehammer, or a small sledge. And I'll show you what the break looks like. That's always a good sign. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's where I cut it. And that's where I broke it. It's got that crystalline look, which doesn't enthrall me so I don't know that these are going to be very good at all once again if you're using it for stuff like displacers for stopping engines you won't see it so the finish is not really going to matter but yeah I always look for that if it breaks like that it's a bit of a worry so I'm thinking that is this still hot not too bad this may be alright it could be total crap oh look that's how easily it comes out no, it just fell out so what I'm going to do for this video, I'm going to spin this up in the lathe and get some sort of idea of how it machines. Once again, you can see how easy it is to do this if you just pour it into steel tube. Once again, it's got to be totally uniform, no seam, and then the aluminium will shrink, contract more than the steel, and it will just fall out like that. Let it cool. Don't quench it with water or you'll definitely get shrinkage. Just let pour it in, preheat the mould first as I've shown you, preheat the mould, pour it in as soon as it's melted, no later, and then let it cool down on its own, don't do anything else to it. Then it'll come out looking like that. Okay, let's put this in the little uh, CQ9325 and spin it up and see what comes out. Right, well here it is, I'll 
stuck it in the thread jaw. And I'm going to run a round nose high speed steel cutter over it. That's a good test. Carbide. I don't like using carbide on aluminium uh, unless you buy the proper aluminium cutting carbide bits, but general purpose ones, nah. Don't do it. Use high speed steel, you get a better finish. So a round nose cutter is always a good test. Put a bit of uh, lube on it, WD-40, kerosene, and it, kerosene engine oil like I use. So we're good to go. What do I think it's going to be like? I think it's going to be total crap, quite frankly, the way it broke. That crystalline look is always a bad sign. Uh, big crystals, small crystals, not so bad, but big crystals, mm, that says that says zinc to me, like it's got a lot of zinc in it. But it had a nice shiny outside finish originally. It didn't look like chrome, it looked like it was just polished, so you just don't know with stuff like this, so okay. I'll get the uh, other camera mount and we'll uh, get some close in looks at this while I do it. Okay, we'll go on medium feed and I'll see what this is like. I haven't got very high expectations of this, but you never know. <coughs> A real mystery metal, this one. We'll just get it somewhere near round first. It's looking good so far. Looking amazingly good. Maybe that outside finish wasn't a fluke after all. Maybe it really was machinable. This, look at this. Look at that. Oh, is this thing? We'll run a bit more. Potentially good. What I'll do is I'll change the angle. Okay, so I'm minimum quite often you'll find that a, a more gradual lead in will always be beneficial. So we'll do that. We'll reverse the the feed direction, and we'll try coming away from the chuck and just see if it does anything to improve the finish. Still on medium feed, remember? Yes, indeed, folks. You can see straight away. The rod isn't talking bullshit. So feed away from the chuck gives you a lot more gradual feeding on your cutter, and then you get a finish looking like that. Whereas before, we got a finish looking like that. Okay, so this aluminium is going to turn up okay, totally usable. So, what do you reckon folks? A success, I would, I would say. And once again, you saw how I did that. I went from terrible finish to good finish by just doing two things, angling in the the cutter so you got more gradual feed in 
and then of course once you do that to get the best effect you want to cut away from the chuck that way it's coming on, on a very small angle the whole way but if I was to go the, in the reverse direction it wouldn't be as effective it'd be better but it wouldn't be as effective so there you go it looks like um, those uh, old crappy vases are actually made out of quite good stuff and I can certainly use that that's totally usable all right that's it from me I hope you got something out of it a couple of little tips there and you can see that even though it looks like crap aluminium you don't know until you you melt down a bit and just try it I, I haven't gone any further with the other stuff because I thought well, it was total garbage it's not worth getting a lot of trouble cutting it all up and all that but as it turned out it's actually pretty good stuff okay that's it see you next time cheers